So hi there, my name is Denise Eckert and I'm from Balance Me Coaching and I love bringing different people on here so they can share their practices and ideas and techniques to help you reduce your stress. And today I've got Taryn. Hello, Taryn. Hi, Denise. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. And I'm so excited to have you on. I love, I want to go to South Africa one of these days. So I was so intrigued when I found out that's where you're from. So that's kind of neat. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you became the, I guess, the person to come to for self-care or self-love? So I kind of grew up very independent. Um, I started working when I was 14 and um, kind of followed um, the money, you know, so did what I felt would give me abundance because that was kind of how I saw value and how I resonated with everybody. And, you know, I got into sales where I could um, depict my own salary. I didn't want to be kind of my worth determined, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I really connected well with people and um, eventually got into sales, traveled overseas a little bit, came back from that and then, got into a sales position and then really found my niche in software. I love to, I love to teach and add value. So when I could, when I could teach and add value to somebody, that's where I really felt like my, my place was. And um, it really did well in, in the corporate industry. And then I became a mom and never wanted to be a corporate mom. Didn't want to, um, you know, have to ask permission to when I could go and see my daughter, you know, horse ride. She's a, she's a little horse rider, so she loves it. And I just, I needed to make a really, really big decision. And I decided to resign and kind of go on my, um, my journey of creativity. I loved being creative in people's homes. So kind of, you know, going in and doing the renovations. So basically receiving their vision and creating that into something that they really want. So I could see it in my head and I could basically create it in the physical for them. And I studied a little bit just to touch up on my skills. And then I kind of just started that business um, as, as a new mom, which was awesome. But then I realized it was very much an ego space that I was in. And I kind of felt to myself, you know, I wasn't really put on the planet to boost people's egos because they think it's a really glamorous job when you're an interior designer, but it's really, really not. Um, and from there, I studied water for four years and then I started a bottle of water company. But I realized that you cannot save the planet or change much until you address people. Because if you look at our physical vessels, you cut our lung open, it looks like a tree branch. You know, our veins represent the rivers that run through the planet. Like we are a universe on our own. So until we create that self-love for ourselves, we're never going to love the planet. We're never going to stop littering. We're never going to stop poisoning things until we start poisoning our own inner world. And that's where I went through a whole range of different kind of programs into the feminine space and then balancing the feminine and the masculine energy because in corporate, I'd operated very much in my masculine. Because as a feminine, you need to kind of, you know, step into that man's world. And I'm sure you, you're aware of that. Yeah. Um, and I really had to dive deep into the self-love and it's something we never taught. Or if we taught, it's all external. It's all, well, I'll have my hair done. I'll have my nails done. I'll go for a massage. And that's not what self-love is. It's, it's a part of it. But self-love and true self-love is building that relationship with your higher self, your, your soul, pretty much. And, and that's where the true power comes. So it's, it's been a journey. Um, but I would, what really fills my soul is when I see people step into their their highest potential when they let go of everything that they're not and um, they step into that authentic version of themselves and it, it's really simple the self-love techniques that that I share it's simple but because we've been taught that intelligence has so much value 
and the more complicated things we can understand, you know, we don't take it seriously, these simple little disciplines that are really life-changing. And I find too, people don't even understand really what self-love is. And as you said, I mean, it's not about taking a trip or going for a weekend or this. Can you give us some steps that people, our listeners here can take to start creating that self-love for themselves? Sure. So the first thing is slowing down because we are rushing from one appointment to the next or one activity to the next, always serving others, especially as, as moms and feminine, you know, we kind of being conditioned that we serve everybody around us, but you can't give from an empty cup. So you might think that you're serving love within your family or within your household, but if your cup's empty, you serving from that place. Um, you know, and, and the deeper you go into spirituality, everything is affected by your consciousness. So if you're rushing around and you're not actually consciously aware of being in the present moment, you are just consuming what is out there opposed to putting your intention and alchemizing things. For example, you know, a lot of the stuff that we eat is, as we know, is pretty poisoned. You know, there's GMOs, there's all sorts of things in it. And if we're just consuming from an unconscious state, we're consuming that corporate business's intentions for us, which are not always the highest. Mm -hmm. Where if we eat unconsciously, if we breathe unconsciously, if we're consuming water consciously, then we can set that intention of how we want that to affect our bodies. So most of us, or some of us may know the work that Dr. Emoto did with the experiments with water. Um, and I've, I've got quite a lot of people to do it. So you cook some rice and you put it in the bottle and you write label, you label love onto it and another one and you label hate onto it. And every day you say hateful words to the one bottle and loving words to the other. And after 30 days, the one bottle with hate, the rice has literally gone black. And the other one where you speak loving words and you give with that kind of attention stays clear, doesn't even get mold in it. And our bodies are 70% water. So our bodies are listening to us. Water is, is really high level of consciousness. So when you're aware of our self-talk, and one of my favorite, favorite and life-changing um, self-love disciplines is the I am affirmations in the mirror. Because we taught affirmations, and often what happens is we, we'll say something and like, you know, I'm abundant. And maybe we've been operating in lack consciousness, and then our minds go, liar. <laughs> where if you are looking into your eyes which are the windows to your soul you feel that on a much deeper level um and you know i find i always teach people what they're back with so if worthiness or unworthiness is something that they really struggle with or um, abundance or you know inner strength it's those are the things that so i'm confident i am worthy i'm abundant but as we know, we go to school for 12 years to learn all these programs, conditioning, whatever you want to call it. And then we kind of think, well, two days in front of the merging, the I'm affirmations is going to change things. It takes as much consistency. So you'll really feel it after, you know, 30 days. Um, you know, I used to have, I used to beat myself up about everything, really high expectations of myself. You know, when I used to make a mistake or not, not kind of achieve what I wanted to achieve, it was like, oh, damn, why did you do that? Where that self-talk doesn't even come in anymore because I've overridden that initial program, but it takes consistency. And the ego hates consistency. Um, and the ego is actually there to sabotage us. It's not our friend. Um, you know, a lot of people talk about integrating the ego. A lot of people talk about the, the, the ego you know, it keeps us safe. No, it doesn't. And the ego is not a healthy program that we run. Um, so other things are sun gazing. You know, we've been taught that the sun's really bad for our eyes, that we shouldn't look at it. Wearing sunglasses all the time is actually causing more problems because the eye receives the sunlight and the codes. And when it's dark all the time, it doesn't send signals to the receptors in your body to absorb that vitamin D. 
it, it does, so you know all of these little things. So sun gazing, you're receiving codes from the sun, especially in the ascension process that we're in at the moment with all the, the energies that are coming in. Um, conscious breathing. Most of us don't even breathe properly. We shallow breathe. And then when we're anxious, we hold our breath. And just three conscious breaths and allowing ourselves to just soften will help transform so much of that anxiety because all it is is a buildup of energy. We just need to conscious breathe and release that. So it's really simple things that we never taught. Um, you know, writing is a really good way of processing things that are coming up, you know, writing and burning if you want to release it. Um, they're pretty much 30, 30 principles um, or practices that I teach. Um, there's mantras. Uh, I give supporting documentation. So when, you know, beings go away from our workshops, they've got that documentation to support themselves. I don't want codependent relationships with people. My whole intention is to empower them. So when they're wobbling, when they're going through all these kind of things, they know the tools that help them get out of that as fast as possible. Um, and then they've got the tools at their disposal because we are all really powerful. We are made to heal ourselves. And when people realize that, then they can really step into really grandness within themselves. Well, it's almost like creating that inner confidence too, like believing in yourself, trusting yourself, trusting your intuition. And I agree with you because I grew up the same. We were very conditioned and I have been in sales and I've been in corporate as well, where you're extremely conditioned. You know, you're like mm -hmm. the little peg in the little round hole and the little round peg and you move up the ladder, you know, it's, um, it's very difficult to come into yourself, even though I know when I was working there, I wasn't feeling myself, but I was programmed that this is what I needed to do. And I'm so glad that I stepped away from it, just like you did. And what a different yeah. lifestyle. Huge. Yeah. So now um, how do you work with people? Like do you, you mentioned you so had shops and... So uh, my partner, Gregory, is a, is a really brilliant numerologist. And, uh, you know, when the deeper you go into numbers and, and, and how they're actually speaking to you and how they relate to you and how everything in your space is actually connected. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a process of whatever somebody's needing. Um, and if, it, if it's a session with me, we often just speak because a lot of people just need to release. They just need a safe space to share what is actually kind of burdening them. Because there's so much we hold on to for fear of judgment, for fear of all of these things. And sometimes people just need that safe space to just empty their cup. You know, like if you have a cup of coffee and you want to put fruit juice in it, you know, you got to empty the cup, you got to finish the coffee first, rinse it out, and then you can put your fruit juice in where so many people hang on to the, the cold coffee, not realizing they can just, you know, tip over all that kind of stuff and then they make space for what they really want. And by holding on to all these things and, you know, judging themselves pretty much, because when you look at most beings, even the sessions I have, people don't realize how similar we are. And we've all gone through so many things, but society paints this picture of this perfect life that you need to create. And everybody kind of compares themselves to that, always feels like they feel short, they fall short. Where when they realize, well, you know, I've been through it, so many other people have been through it. So that feeling of I'm not alone in this gives them so much kind of empowerment. You know, they're not isolated in this thing. And then just teaching them the self-love disciplines. Um, I, pretty, I, I don't have any kind of standard thing. Every being is different. Everybody's got different energetics and, and things that they're looking for. So it's very much a let's connect, let's chat. And I pretty much ask my higher self to bring me whatever information or wisdom that person is needing in those moments. And half the time, I don't even know what I'm saying <laughs> because I'm just an, an open vessel to to receive the guidance that comes through. 
but um, there's workshops, there's one-on-one -on -one sessions, you know, sometimes people really want that, that deep dive and to be able to cry and all that kind of thing. So it's very um, niche to, to what each person is needing at those times. And, you know, self-love is not only for feminine, it's the masculine too, uh, and even more so because, you know, they haven't even been touched by the idea of self-love. You know, it's such a foreign concept to them. We've all got a soul, you know, and that, that soul is crying out for attention and crying out to actually be in its, its authenticity. And, you know, we are always guided by that essence. And the closer we build a relationship with our soul through the self-love practices, the more inspiration we get. Um, and, and one thing I want to touch on is people aren't t told how to feel. Um, and even my daughter, she's been in, in the, the, the normal 3D school system for some moments. And I've recently taken her up and put her into a crystal school, which is based on universal law. It's more drawing out her gift. And it was quite foreign for her in the beginning, even to start doing the exercises, because she's like, what if I get it wrong? You know, what if, you know, what are the marks I'm going to get? Like, they, they're not, they're taught what to think, not how how to think, never mind how to feel, like how does this make you feel, how does this, um, how, what's your perspective of this, because anything out of the box is shut down in, in the 3D school, and you know, it's, whenever I say to people, ask me for advice, I'm like, how does it make you feel, and that's all you got to trust, you know, when it's a job opportunity, when it's a relationship, when it's anything, how does it feel in your body, because our bodies can't laugh, our minds will, but our bodies don't. And if it feels good in your body, then it's a good thing. Um, so it's just teaching these little things um, to people that really, really serve them. And it's funny because it's so simple, but we put yes. up all these walls to protect ourselves. And, you know, instead of really just honoring how we feel, we put up the walls because we, we don't know how to feel. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, we all are different. We all react different. We all have different triggers. We've all got bit different backgrounds and history. So it's, you know, it's quite, I don't know, very much inner work where we need to yeah. look at what's inside. And that is so powerful. Now, can you talk a little bit about this crystal schools? That sounds amazing. So it is based on universal law. Um, it's online at the moment internationally. So if any, this is resonating for anybody, they can always get hold of me. Um, it's, we, we connect online every now and again with parents and with, with the children. Um, it is an intention to have crystal schools, physical crystal schools set up all over the world, but that's when the abundance comes. Um, I'm looking at some properties here in South Africa to partner with some people to start getting that off the ground. But even as, as parents, we don't know how to parent consciously. You know, we've been, we've been caught up in, in the system and it's just copy and paste and copy and paste and copy and paste. So I remember a story I heard where, you know, um, there was this girl who would, I don't know if it was, should bake something or cook something. And she would, I think it was a chicken or whatever, and she'd cut certain parts of the chicken off. And um, one day a friend of hers said, why do you do that? And she's like, I don't know. My mom did it. And her mom did it. And her mom's mom did it. And eventually she went to a great grand or something and asked her. And she said, well, back in those days, the oven was so small, it didn't fit in. So we had to cut, I don't know if it was the bread in half or the chicken in half or whatever it was. And that's why we did it. So it's, we don't even question. It's just like, this is the way it's always been done. So it's, it's even as a parent, you need to relearn on how to parent consciously. So they've got, they've got a system for parents, which is awesome. It goes from pregnancy all the way through to teenagers. And it's, it's also, the pregnancy part is very important because your personality is actually created in the womb on the relationship between your mom and your dad and what's actually going on in that space. That's where your personality comes from. 
because everything is transmitted straight through to the baby. So it's just really creating that very conscious way of being right from conception. So I love what they've done. I've seen a massive transformation in, in my daughter with in so many ways. And it's really, really cool. And it's getting them ready for the shift that, that's taking place. You know, the high level of consciousness, everything is changing. We're going back to co-creating and cooperations and, and all those things. So it's really um, getting them set up for, for what's coming. Very exciting. Wonderful. So we're going to wrap this up. Do you have any final words you'd like to share with the audience? Um, yeah, just slow down and pay attention. Everything in your, in your space is, is speaking to you. And just, you know, fall in love with, with who you are. And everything is inside of you. We don't need to chase anything externally. We, you know, I grew up always looking for external validation um for everything and people's opinions my decisions I was making and the more you learn to trust you the easier it is to just go with the flow and just be and you know there is no there is no worry there is no confusion when you can really trust you know that in the compass wonderful well thank you so much for your time today so up you're welcome yeah it was so i enjoyed that so much it was so different and so important in these especially in these times as well is to start first of all slow down and start listening to yourself and you know working on yourself not working on yourself creating that confidence within yourself that you are you know you are fine mm-hmm and also just one last thing is just where you putting your attention yeah. because where attention goes, energy flows. So if you are focusing on the fear narrative that's being so promoted at the moment, you will probably manifest a fearful experience. So focus on what you do want, you know, focus on, you know, what brings you joy, put energy into the things that you care about because that will manifest more of that and then gratitude of course gratitude brings more experiences to be grateful for complaining brings the same so you know just little simple things can really change can change everyday experiences wonderful well thank you so much for your time and um you're welcome thank you denise it's been so awesome to connect <laughs> yeah just a final note if you're struggling with burnout or chronic stress I have free resources such as a podcast, Facebook support group, my blog. To get these free resources, please visit my website at www.balancelittle-me.ca. Now this is Denise Eckert signing off and contact me if you're looking to create a happier, more balanced lifestyle today.